Assalamu alaikum dear learners. I welcome you all here at Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. I hope you all are well and enjoying the weather as well. I read it somewhere that the one who stops learning gets old, either in 20 or 80. And the one who keeps on learning stays young. And I don't think any one of you wants to get old that early. The best part in your life is to keep your mind young. And here we are to keep your minds young. And the process is learning the language English. And the topic that we have selected for you all is verb. And to guide you all what verb actually is, we have our very own expert, Mr. Arshad Mahmood. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Arshad. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. What about you? I'm okay. And you know what? Today I have got an assignment for you. Mm -hmm. What is that? Yesterday I found my niece, she was reading something. And that particular something was actually a definition of verb. Right, what is that? A word which affirms or predicates something of some person or thing. A part of speech expressing being, action or the suffering of action. She just read it and it just flew on from the top of my mind. I couldn't understand it. I want you to teach us all about this. So you want to know what a verb is? Yes. Simply speaking, a verb is a word that shows us some action or some state. What do we mean by mm -hmm. action or the suffering of action? When action takes place, it is done by some subject Someone. and the object suffers that action. Right. For example, if I say he eats an apple, so apple take, is taking the, the action and it is being done by he. <laughs> so dear learners, welcome today. It's a very interesting topic that is verb and uh, verb is very important part of speech that can be called the backbone of uh, a sentence. Sometimes you can make a sentence without any other parts of speech just by saying a verb. For example, come or right. sit down or get lost. These are all verbs and we can call them complete messages. So a verb is a word that tells something about a person or thing. The word verb comes from the Latin word verbum. That means a word. So once again, English getting a lot from Latin. Latin. Verbum means word. It is the most important word in a sentence and verbs are divided into two main classes. The main verbs and the helping verbs, which are also called auxiliary verbs. I didn't hear this name before. Auxiliary mm, verbs. Auxiliary. You know Words. what is an auxiliary? If there is a big river and small streams coming and adding to the richness of water, they're called auxiliary. So right. auxiliaries help uh, construct big sentences uh, in English or in all languages. In other words, auxiliaries help other main verbs. For example, I cannot say he writing. I must say he, he is, is writing. writing. So is is helping verb here. The auxiliary verb is the other name given to helping verbs. Yes, exactly. Helping verbs are further divided into two categories. They are primary auxiliary verbs and modals. Now, people often pronounce uh, this word as model. That is wrong. It should be Model. Models. Because model is M-O-D-E-L. That is model. Models. They're called models because uh, they show some sort of modality. How right. something is expressed. Right. Right. The primary auxiliary verbs are to do, to be and to have. These primary auxiliaries uh, are very important to learn and especially to be is called some sort of VIP verb in English. Uh -huh. Because it may take uh, about eight forms. Eight usually forms. usually a verb takes uh, three to five forms for example if i say cut 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 all of them three they make one form cut because there is no change right. and the second form is cuts and the third form is cutting right. three forms right. and then we have for example go went gone yeah. go went gone three, three and goes four going five but b b has got three different shapes in uh, present tense is mr mm -hmm. in the past 
was and were, mm -hmm. five, B, uh, including B6, and then we've got being and being, five, uh, eight forms in all. Pretty long task. Yes, the number of modals is bigger than the number of primary auxiliaries. The modals are will, would, may, might, can, could, must, have, have to, should, ought to. And we keep on using all these things, you know, in our life. We cannot speak even Urdu language without using these models. They're very important. Sorry to interrupt you here. I would like you all learners to note down the examples that are being given by Mr. Ashad Mahmood. That is going to be very helpful for you. And you can try to make the similar examples for yourself. Mm -hmm. Carry That's on. good. That's good. So first of all, we'll discuss the main verbs. They can be discussed from different angles. We like we've got regular verbs, mm -hmm. irregular verbs. Regular verbs are the verbs which take D or ED when we change them into the past form. For example, uh, smile is a regular verb. Play is a regular verb. And talk is a regular verb. Change is a regular verb. Change is a regular verb. But sink or uh, drink or go, they are not regular verbs because mm -hmm. they can. these verbs can take any form or sometimes they don't change the form at all. For example, cut, 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 mm -hmm. put, put, no change. That's irregular. Yes, these are irregular. So regular verbs take D or ED at the end. The form is just changed by adding e, uh, D and ED at D the end. D or ED. Uh, then we've got uh, the terms like transitive verbs and intransitive verb. Transitive verbs are the verbs which uh, are uh, mm, like, which must take an object. It's transitive. Transitive. I, I used to call it transitive. Mm, transitive. Example, uh, if I say, I do, does it convey any meaning? Mm, I do what? I mean, it's like... Yes, good. I do my homework. Mm. Okay, if I say, she makes... She makes what? Cup of tea. So, makes, do, construct, and there are many other verbs which are called transitive because they must, they must take an object. Mm -hmm. If object is missing, then message is not clearly The conveyed. sentence is incomplete. Yes. Now, if you compare uh, transitive verbs with intransitive verbs, you will see that in uh, intransitive verbs, we don't need any object. For example, he smiles, she runs. In these uh, verbs, we don't need any object. Simply like we can have adverb. For example, uh, he walks slowly. We cannot put an object after walks. These are called intransitive verbs, which don't require an object. Now, talking about regular verbs once again, you know, these are the verbs which make their past and past participle by adding D or ED to the infinitive. Infinitive is a base form of the verb. For example, in going or goes, the base form or infinitive is go. Sometimes the final consonant has to be doubled. For example, stop changes into stopped. P is doubled. Same is the case with slip, uh, where like it becomes slipped, and then dub becomes ducked. Irregular verbs are the ones which don't form their past forms by adding D or ED to the infinitives. They either don't change their shape or take two to four different forms. For example, if you look at the verb cut, 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 no change. So they're all considered one form. Same is the case with hit. Look at this again, it's shape, no change, put, no change. Uh, I like came across uh, one sentence, interesting sentence. Somebody had written the sentence, he hit the ball hard. So hit is, is wrong, it should be hit. And then if you ask people what is the past form of spin, they might say it is spinned or it is span, following uh, the patterns of sing, sang, sung, spin, span, spun, that is wrong. So spin and uh, stick, and even swing, they take only one form in the past, that is spun, like spin, spun, spun, swing, swung, swung, and stick, stuck, stuck. And similarly, you've got the verbs which are go, went, and gone, and then uh, shake, shook, shaken. Uh, if you look at shake, shook, shaken, this verb can take five different forms, shake, shook, shaken, three, shakes, and then shaking, five forms. Uh, in our grammar books, it is uh, amazingly, it is wrongly mentioned that the verb sit has got uh, the forms sat and sit. So they think past participle is sit, that is wrong. It should be I have sat, no, I have sit, that is wrong, sit is wrong. So the past form is sat. Uh, interestingly, in American English, we see a positive change coming 
as the Americans have started changing some of their irregular verbs into irregular ones. For example, if you look at the verb dream, in British English it is dreamt and spell, it is spelled. But if you look at these verbs in American English, they are pronounced as dreamed. ED is being added to dream and spell. In the similar fashion, learn is irregular in British English, but it becomes regular in American English, that is, that is learned, ED. But the Britishers say learned. And some of these verbs, they uh, uh, become complicated because they have been derived from nouns. Look at the word I. I knows. These are all nouns basically, but they can be used as, uh, as verbs. For example, I, he is eyeing at me, or the enemy was eyeing at the border. So here, eyeing at means watching, looking, nose. If I say, the dog is nosing the food, I hope you can guess. And hand again, hand is a noun, but it can be used as a verb. Hand, it, hand down these, this information to your uh, boss, or uh, hand it over to somebody. Snake, interesting, snake is uh, some uh, sort of poisonous uh, reptile, but it can also be used as a verb. For example, I saw a beautiful stream snaking through the village. Interesting, isn't it? So snake can also be used as a verb. So this is the difference between English and Urdu. English simply exploits same word for different purposes. So verb uh, is very important in a sentence. We cannot make a sentence without a verb. Sometimes a verb functions alone. For example, he comes, he goes, but in most cases, a verb has to be helped by some auxiliary verbs. For example, I say, he lives in this house, or I can also say, he is living in this house. I can also say, he has been living in this house since 1990. So, have been living. What is happening in this sentence? Living is a main verb that is changing into ing form because of been and been is there, it is a third form of V because of have. So have or has, he has been living. So this, this whole group is called verbal group. Now look at uh, these verbs, how complicated they might appear. If I say uh, the sentence, they stop talking and if I ask you to compare it with, they stop to talk. What's the difference? They stopped talking and they stopped to talk. Can you guess? Right. In the first sentence, when I say they stopped talking, it means they are no more on talking terms. And when I say they stop to talk, they physically stop. Why? To talk with each other. So that is how English can confuse you. Uh, second interesting sentence, I saw him run. And if you compare this sentence with, I saw him running, you will see in the first sentence, I saw him run, here the action was completed when you saw. For example, if I say, I saw the thief run, it means he had simply run away. But if I say, I saw the thief running and I caught him, here it shows that when you saw him, the action was going on. So the same verb giving you different ideas. I think, I am thinking, strange. Think and thinking, same word being used in two different ways, two different shapes, and giving two different meanings. It shows that we cannot use uh, all English verbs in ing form or a simple form. There are different verbs which are very particular and we have to use them very carefully. For example, understand, I cannot use in ing form. Hmm. I cannot say, I am understanding what you are saying. I should say, I, I understand what you are saying. Or if you want to use some ing form, being forced by L1, Urdu language or mother tongue, then we can say, I'm getting what you're saying. Mm. So understand will not take ing form. Uh, similarly, the verbs like uh, contain or remember, they can't be used in ing form. Appropriate sentence no. should be, I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand or I understand what you're saying. Mm. Both are appropriate, both are correct. So in English, we have to be very careful in using these verbs because we cannot treat them like Urdu verbs. Right. Urdu has got its own rules. English has got its own rules. You didn't so, tell us that mathematical formula. Action plus tense gives us verb. Yes. Uh, simply, uh, if you look at a sentence, the sentence is, he uh, is writing a letter. So this sentence can broadly be broken up into two parts. He, subject part, and the rest is writing a letter predicate. Hmm. So predicate is something that tells us something about the subject. subject. It, contains, it contains its verb as well. Right. So he, uh, he is sitting, so he is subject, and is sitting is predicate. The birds are flying. Mm -hmm. Can you guess? The birds are flying. 
what is subject? Bird is the subject and are flying, flying the predicate. predicate. And predicate always takes the main verb right. or verb and uh, helping verb. Here I understand what actually is given in this definition, the being, being. The suffering of an action. Exactly. Being, suffering or sometimes state. If I say uh, the children are playing, here mm -hmm. some action is going on. Mm -hmm. This is called play, can be called dynamic verb or action verb. But if you compare it with the, the child is naughty. Here is, is not an action verb. This is the verb of the state. Help, helping, helping verb. No, it is being used as main verb. That is called verb of state. Okay. It is giving some state. He is a doctor. Mm -hmm. So again, a verb of state. Uh, these are the main verbs. Uh, we shall we move to models now? Sure. Models, not models. Models are models. Can, could. Uh, they, they go in groups sometimes. May and might. You've got must and have to. Shall and should or ought to. Uh, and used to. Dare, need. Uh, these are very important because they are mainly used for three functions. Ability, mm -hmm. probability, obligation. Mm -hmm. So they can be divided uh, for three different functions. So first of all, I would like to give uh, some uh, definition of uh, these modal verbs. A modal verb or auxiliary verb is a verb which modifies another verb so that the modified verb has more intention in its expression. In essence, the modal verb expresses modality, the way in which something is being said. Models, modal verbs are common in most languages of Germanic origin, especially like uh, or including English. Mm -hmm. In our languages uh, too, uh, look at uh, the verbs like karna uh, chahiye, mm zurur karna -hmm. chahiye, this sort of thing, they are models. In English, uh, I that said... That was obligation form, no? Uh, should, Zarur obligation. Yes, yes. So we'll come to those functions. Mm -hmm. First, I said these models are used for ability, which can be physical as well as mental. How physical? I can run very fast. That's a physical ability. And what is the past? I could run, could run. very fast, even faster when I was a child. A child. Now, this is physical. He can solve any question. So this is mental. mental. When he was young, he could solve many equations at a time. Mm -hmm. Again, ability, mental one in the past. So can, uh, but one thing you must keep in mind, dear learners, that these models are very different from uh, the main verbs because these model verbs are called defective. As defective? Defective verbs because they don't take as form. Hmm. in the third person. For example, we say he goes, but we can't say he musts or he cans or hmm. he shoulds. Hmm. These verbs don't take ing form. Right. We cannot say shoulding or musting or canning. They are actually defective. Yes, and they don't take the third form with ed. Hmm. For example, we say go, went, gone or, or, or play, played, played, but we cannot say should, shoulded. Wented. Went. Wented is like the main verb that mm -hmm. is again that is not possible but these models they don't take ed or ed mm -hmm. uh, d or ed so we call them uh, defective verbs too uh, now coming to their uh, use why they're used and how they're used first ability can could as we've discussed can is used uh, for physical or mental ability in present and in the past we use good. could but interesting if i say he could kill he could eat the whole cake then he could have eaten the whole cake. There is difference in the meaning. Mm -hmm. Can you judge? He could eat the whole cake mm -hmm. and he could have eaten the whole cake. Um, the first one, he could mm -hmm. eat the whole cake is an, is, a, is an ability? Both of them like could, they show ability. But in the first sentence, he could eat the whole cake shows he in fact ate the whole cake. But in the second sentence, he could have eaten, he had the ability, he had the required appetite, but he did not keep eat the whole because he maybe kept for some share for his friend yeah. or for some, some other person. So He, he could had have, the chance, but he did not. Yes, could have means something that did not take place. Right. For example, I could have broken the door, but I did not. Did not. So this is how these uh, words change. So that is like physical ability. Now looking at uh, uh, possibility or probability, may and might. If I say he may come, it means there is a, there chance, is, there is a chance that he can come. Mm. 
And he might come in the past and we can also use in present and future. He might come tomorrow, but the possibility in might is lesser than uh, the one in may. Hmm. May and might. Then we've got... Uh, he might uh, have come. He, he might have come. That is like again in the past. Hmm. He might have come in the past. M and might can also be used for future. So this is uh, this makes English a bit confusing when we say because it might be possible. Yes, about. And again, I would like to give since you made the sentence, may, the difference between maybe, may, and space and be. Maybe means we're using a modal verb, but when we use maybe together, it means perhaps. Right. Maybe he can come. Perhaps he can come. See, learners, these details are very important. I want you all to learn it properly, and you can write it down for yourself. Right. So we've discussed uh, ability as well as probability. Now we'll discuss obligation. For obligation, we use the word should, ought to, must, have to. Should. If I say you should work hard, it means if you work hard, it is good. If you don't work hard, it is bad. And the same sense can be conveyed with the help of ought to. But the difference between should and ought to is that should is used without to and ought to must be used with to two sentences. You should work hard, you ought to work hard, they've got similar meanings. Now I'll give you strong obligation, must and have to. You must work hard. For example, you go to uh, the zoo and you see a board there, the visitors must not give food to the animals. It means it is prohibited to throw food or give food to these animals because they might die food might be poisonous. So it is not your job to give the food to these animals. So must is strong obligation. If your father says you must work hard, he can also say you have to work hard. It means you don't have any other option but to work hard. But it becomes difficult, uh, slightly difficult when you talk about the past form of uh, must. Must is used in the past in two different senses. When we use must with have, for example, he must have come, it doesn't show any obligation. It is showing uh, your deduction or your guess. For example, if I say, uh, yesterday I went to his home, but the door was locked. And my friend says, he replies, I'm talking to my friend. I say, when I went to Ahmed's home, it was locked. And my friend sa says, he must have gone somewhere. So it is not strong obligation. It means uh, it is a guess made by my friend. Uh, similarly, if uh, my sister says, my child kept on weeping the whole night. What will I reply? You know, I'll say, he must have been sick or he must have been hungry. So must in present, it is uh, obligation. In past, it becomes obligation when we change into have to or in the past it is had to. It means must in present can be used. In past, we must use uh, uh, for the, uh, using have to, and the past form of have to, that is had to. So must in the past becomes had to, in the future it will become will have to. Three sentences, you must work hard. You had to work hard, past, you will have to work hard, future. And should a note uh, ought to they're clear, I, I believe. Now we'll discuss uh, will and would. Will, uh, everybody knows how to use will, uh, but will becomes would when we talk about direct indirect direct speech for example johnson said i will help you when i change into indirect form i would say johnson said that he would help, help me. me so some people think shall becomes should that is also wrong shall also becomes would he said i shall go to lahore he said that he would go to lahore and would can also be used in the past especially by the americans when he was a child, he would get up early in the morning, he would go to the garden, he would do this, he would do that. But the Britishers they use, used to, in, instead of that. He used to get up early in the morning, he used to go to garden. So used to and would are used for some sort of habitual action in the past. Right. The action that is repeated, on repeated. At, at a time period. Yes, but that is no, mo that is no longer uh, existing. Is, is existing now. Uh, look at the sentence, for example, I used to work for Mitchell's and Mitchell's company. Mm -hmm. No, this I don't work. Okay. No, I, I don't used work. to. I did it yes. before, but yes. now I'm not doing Yes. And people often use used to in present sense uh, wrongly. They say, I am used to go or I am used to eat this food. That is wrong. When I'm we use am, I am used to eating this food. Right. 
I am used to eating, I am used to living in this atmosphere, I am used to playing this game. Isn't it correct? I'm used to of living in this no, atmosphere. No, no, no. I'm that used is wrong. to living this. I'm used to living right. and I used to live past. I'm used to living present. Right. So these are uh, the auxiliaries that we have to uh, model verbs. We must use very carefully. Sometimes people use should and must together mm -hmm. or should and have to get together. For example, you must have to work hard. Mm. You must work hard or you have to work hard. Mm. And I hope people have learned and you have learned too. I have learned a lot. Surely I'm learning a lot from Mr. Arshad and I hope you all are enjoying it. Today you must have noticed that I was repeatedly saying that you guys must note it down for yourself. You know why? Because just watching or hearing is not enough. The process of learning is not completed until and unless you try to practice it. And you do have to practice if you do want to learn. So that is all from Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. I hope you guys enjoyed the topic of today. And I promise next time I'm going to bring another interesting topic. Take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.